So the tool platform manages all aspects of a SaniPath deployment. So we, and we use uh, mobile data collection using mobile phones or tablets, and the environmental analysis data from the laboratory is also collected using mobile data collection. This goes into a data base or repository that is on the Amazon web server. There's also a way to set up an account and customize that account for your particular city. And then all of the analysis of the data is done on the, also done on the uh, database that's on the web. And it's automated so that you see the results of the data that you collected and it generates a final report. Um, if you could click again, please. All of this information is freely available on our SaniPath website. And one more time, please. And all of the information about the software is posted on GitLab. So this is something that you can go to and try out yourself and see what type of uh, data collection is involved and how the data is analyzed. Next slide, please. So the tool has uh, several outputs based on the behavior uh, surveys. You get an output of behavior frequencies. For example, here, this is asking how often do you have uh, contact with open drain water and showing the results as a pie chart of what proportion of people said they had never had contact with open drain water and um, other frequencies of one to five times a month, six to 10 times a month, more than 10 times a month. So the behavior data is shown as pie charts. Over on the other side of this uh, figure, we see the data from the environmental samples where the x-axis shows the uh, magnitude of E. coli contamination and the y-axis is showing percentage of samples. So for this example, with drain water, you see that a high proportion of samples have uh, high levels of E. coli contamination. And these two pieces of data, the environmental contamination data and the behavior frequency data are fed into a risk assessment model. Um, and it also uses other parameters such as intake volumes and duration of exposure to generate a risk profile. And in this risk profile, the proportion of people in red are the proportion of people in a neighborhood or in a city who are exposed to this particular pathway. So in this example, it would be exposed to open drain water. And the, mag um, the shade of the red, the color of the red, shows the magnitude of the exposure or how much E. coli they are exposed to through this particular pathway. And this common metric of exposure to E. coli, which is an indication of fecal contamination exposure, allows you to compare the different pathways. It allows you to compare the risks of drain water, for example, to the risks of contaminated municipal water or the risks of contact with flood water. Next slide, please. Next slide, thank you. So the tool generates a final report that uses the data and the results of the deployment. And this, is, uh, this report is in the form of a Word document, which is, can be edited. And it includes background information, um, methods of how the deployment was done, um, the results of the deployment, including the, the different graphics and the risk profile and the list of dominant pathways. And you see here that it also makes some suggestions or recommendations for interventions that can be done to address these pathways. Next slide, please. To date, we have worked with partners around the world in 10 countries, 11 cities, and 48 neighborhoods to deploy this tool. And you can see that uh, we have used this in two cities in South Asia. In uh, Dhaka, Bangladesh, this tool was used in 10 neighborhoods. 
In Phillore, India, the tool was used in two neighborhoods. And also recently, we worked with um, NYSED National Institute for Cholera and Enteric Diseases in Kolkata to deploy the tool in two neighborhoods in Kolkata as part of a study looking at risks of typhoid fever. Um, 